always remember, Han shot first. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. This is supposed to be, <laughs> this is supposed to be, uh, make a sound, but it doesn't, so I had to improvise. Hear that? This is what my blaster does. Ha <laughs> ha. Hi, I'm Ifton. Uh, if you couldn't tell, I'm a Star Wars fan. I also really like makeup, and in fact, I have a, a little problem in that I am a makeup hoarder. So welcome to a special May the 4th edition of Confessions of a Makeup Hoarder. Today, I'm going to be pulling out a collection that came out two Christmases ago, <laughs> so Christmas 2017, it's now May 2019, that I'm finally going to be using for the very first time. This is the Cargo X Star Wars collection. Of course, being the Star Wars fan that I am, I had to pick up this collection, but then I just didn't do anything with it. So often I buy the makeup because I like the idea of the packaging, the collecting of the makeup, but then I don't really use it. So I am today finally in honor of May the 4th. I don't, to me, it's National Star Wars Day. I don't really know if it's a national holiday, but in my book, and my book's all that really counts to me, I decided to finally put these palettes to use, play with them, try them for the very first time. And, you know, in honor of my love of Star Wars, I came up with this eyeshadow look that is inspired by one of my favorite characters. If you can guess who that character is, be sure to leave it in the comments. So if you wanna see this collection <laughs> that is quite old, but you know, play with some old things, maybe you guys have this makeup already. Uh, or if you wanna see how I did this Star Wars inspired makeup look, then be sure to keep watching because we're getting started right now. <laughs> massive Star Wars fan. I am. <laughs> if you couldn't already tell from this channel, I'm kind of a big nerd. And Star Wars is honestly one of my favorite things. It always has been since the time I was really, really young. Uh, I remember, actually, I, I have them. <laughs> Look, wait one second. Here's my original <laughs> VHSs. Yes, people, do you remember these? Oh, this is, oh, it is rebound. Uh, yeah, these are the original, my original VHS tapes of the original trilogy. Actually, it wasn't even the original trilogy because it was just these. This is all that existed when I was young and when I was growing up. Um, this is obviously from the 90s. What version is this? This is the 1995 remastered version. Not the original, original, you know, 1977 version. You know, George Lucas already got his paws on these a little bit, did a little tweaking, but... He hadn't totally messed them up yet, so these were still pretty, so still pretty true. I think true to the spirit of the original. <laughs> um, so yeah, these are my, I love them. I mean, my favorite, favorite film of all time is definitely A New Hope. Um, episode four is fantastic. Does it even say the episodes on here? I don't think it does. I don't remember when they put that in and changed it. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, episode four is my favorite of all time. I would watch these like a couple times a month, probably twice a month. I would just like start watching these. <laughs> my mother worked two Saturdays a weekend, so two Saturdays a month uh, at the library. And on those days when she was working, my father was supposed to, you know, babysit me, which is stupid. He's my father. He's not babysitting. He's just do his fatherly duties, but he didn't really want to um, have anything to do with me. Probably because I do talk a lot and I'm a little bit loud and I think he found that quite annoying. <laughs> so he would like banish me to the basement. He'd be like, go, go watch your TV downstairs and like leave me alone. I want to watch basketball or soccer. He didn't really, he wasn't really into football at that time, like in the nineties, but like, just leave me alone. I want to watch Jacques Pepin or basketball. Those were usually what he was watching. And so he would just banish me and be like, go away and leave me alone. Um, so I would watch, I would watch Star Wars. This was like my love. Uh, I love Star Wars so much. I have a massive collection of collectibles. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm, I'm that person that collects like Star Wars toys and like leaves them in the packaging. Yeah, I really, really, really love Star Wars. So, oops, <laughs> Return of the Jedi down. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I haven't watched these in a long time. I feel like I should. I should watch these VHSs. I have them on DVD now. Um, for the true Supers fans, you will know, I did purchase the 2006 special edition re-releases of the DVDs. Mm-hmm, I did, because those have the untouched original theatrical version of all of the films. So like the original 1977, George Lucas hasn't messed with it yet version of the film which, you know, is important for us true, true Star Wars fans. And, you know, so being the, the true Star Wars fan and the collector of Star Wars memorabilia that I am, when a friend of mine in grad school before The Last Jedi was released, she came up to me and she was like, hey, Efton, guess what? Star Wars is going to have a makeup collection. And I was like, what? You, you just spoke the magic words, Star Wars makeup? Like, what? <laughs> I was so excited. Of course... I did purchase the Star Wars X Cargo Makeup Collection. So Cargo Makeup, I don't really hear people talk about Cargo too often. So they came out with two eyeshadow palettes. There is a light side palette, and then there is a dark side palette. They came out with two mascaras. We have the Resistance, and we have the first order. They also came out with a number of compact mirrors. Compact mirrors. Um, this one you guys have seen already. This is actually from the Cargo Star Wars collection. This is the only thing in that whole collection that I've used. Um, I use this in like every one of my videos, so you guys have already seen this. But this, of course, is my Princess Leia mirror. Um, it's a little compact mirror that I use in all my videos to put on my makeup. Uh, there also was, I believe, there was a Ray version. There was a BB-8 version, and I. I think a Captain Phasma version. I'm pretty sure there were like four different mirrors. Of course I had to go with Princess Leia. You know. I just wish, like, they are really, I'm sorry, this is probably really judgmental, but I feel like the producers of Star Wars, like Kathleen Kennedy, like Kathleen, Kathleen Kennedy, what are you doing? You are wasting Gwendolyn Christie as Captain Phasma and just like, Take her stupid helmet off. Like, come on, man. Gwendolyn Christie is awesome. Just take off her. Mm. I probably would have bought the Phasma one if it could see her face, but like, they don't show. <sighs> Phasma's never taken off her mask. And it's like, uh, she's just such a wasted character. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get what's Phasma's point. Like, I just don't get it. I, just, I don't get it. They're wasting Gwendolyn. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that there. Gwendolyn Christie is being wasted in Star Wars, but you know, we're just gonna leave that there and move on. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I bought this whole collection and never used it. Let me show you the two palettes that are in this collection. So this, of course, is the light side palette. It has the little Rebel Alliance symbol on here. And in here, you have eight shadows. It is kind of cool how it's like, um, a pressed glitter palette, so it looks like stars. So here's a light side. Overall, a very warm tone neutral palette. And then we have the dark side eyeshadow palette, which of course has the you know first order symbol on it. Same kind of packaging. And then here we have its eight cool tone shadows. So overall, I mean, you can tell light side, dark side, just from looking at the two palettes, um, warm tone versus cool tone, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, I get that part of the theme, but I just in general, yeah, I bought this whole collection and I will be completely frank. The reason that the only thing I've used from this collection is the mirror is because I bought it for the packaging, not really for the inside stuff. I've never tried anything from Cargo Cosmetics before. Um, I've heard that they're pretty well respected and liked within, you know, the, the beauty community. And then also just like, I'm sorry, but this is just so... Oh, I mean, I like these colors. I actually like the warm side. I like the light side better because I do like a, a warm tone neutral palette, but... Oh, honey, I just feel like there was such an opportunity that was missed in this collection. And then also the part that really gets to me is they, they didn't even bother to name 
the shadows. So the shadows are, are literally just called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they did make the numbers, you know, a Roman numeral, just like the episodes are labeled in Star Wars. Um, you can kind of see here is the packaging. You know, so they are Roman numerals. I just feel like they really missed out on making this collection like something really exciting and like special and I, I don't know. I, am I, is that weird for me to feel like that or to say that? It's just, I mean, I know it's old, like there's no, we can't get this collection anymore unless you buy it like secondhand, which I don't think people would really want to do. But I just like, ah, ah, it just frustrates me. It frustrates me. I know people had issues with that like Game of Thrones collections that Urban Decay just did, but they spoke to the fans. I mean, that collection was, the, it did, it, was for the fans. I mean, and I like how everything was themed and like the names like coordinated it. It was special for the fans. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna use shade one. <laughs> no, name them something. They missed out, they missed the ball. Like cargo could have been like, it, they could have blown up with this collection being like everyone would have been talking about them. They didn't. So because these palettes were so, just a snooze fest for me. I tried to come up with something a little more exciting. I had to like look elsewhere for inspiration and I was kind of thinking and reflecting about my love of Star Wars and some of my favorite characters. So I actually want to do a makeup look that is inspired by one of my all time favorite characters from Star Wars. And I think I can pull it off. I'm hopeful from the colors that are in these palettes. I think I can pull it off. So for this look, I'm going to do a makeup look that is inspired by Ahsoka Tano. If you don't know who Ahsoka Tano is, one, you're not a real Star Wars fan. Two, you need to go watch the Clone Wars immediately. And three, she's amazing. I love Ahsoka. She is so strong, so powerful, and just like a wonderful, a wonderful character. I adore Ahsoka. So because of that, I'm gonna do a, an Ahsoka Tano inspired makeup look. So let's zoom in, let's start playing with these palettes, and let's get to it. So I'm going to start, of course, by priming my eyelids. I'm using my MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot. I, okay, I realized that maybe I was a bit harsh. <laughs> Was saying you're not a true Star Wars fan if you don't know who Ahsoka is. That was probably a bit much. But honestly, you really, people really need to get to see the Clone Wars. I think the Clone Wars are fantastic. So Ahsoka is a character that is only in the Clone Wars and then she also shows up later on in Star Wars Rebels, which are animated television shows, not the main series movies if that makes sense. So I get that people wouldn't know her, but they are canon. <laughs> so, you know, if you're a real fan and you want to know everything about the Star Wars universe, you should check them out. Um, the Clone Wars is actually, the TV series, there's six seasons, or like five full seasons, and then the sixth season is called the, the, Lost, the Lost Missions, or whatever I think it's called. I believe there's, it's like a, a half season. There's only a few episodes in the actual sixth season. But um, the Clone Wars takes place between episodes two and, and episodes three, which if you think that, you know, didn't really make sense what's going on, you know, the Clone Wars start obviously at the end of episode two. Obi-Wan of course went to Kamino, found out that a Jedi Master earlier had commissioned the Kaminoans I think, <laughs> to you know, make all this clone army for the Jedi and for the Republic. Um, he shows up, of course, to Geonosis, where um, Count Dooku, Count Dooku, who was the leader of the Separatists, also a former Jedi Knight himself, who's then become the apprentice to um, Darth Sidious, and that's the start of the Clone Wars. So basically, the Clone Wars TV series TV series picks up pretty much fairly closely after that period. So in this, the very first movie, you meet Ahsoka, she's 14. Um, she has just been promoted to Padawan learner, you know, as part of a Jedi. So she's training to be a Jedi Knight and she's given to Anakin um, to train. Ahsoka is really cool. She's a really, really cool character. Um, she and Anakin, of course, get on really well. They're both a little bit reckless and wild. So like they're a good, a good match for each other. But I'm not gonna say any more about it because I don't wanna spoil it because I really, you guys really should go watch The Clone Wars. It's really, really good. <laughs> it's a really, really well done series. I'm going to go ahead and start with the Light Side palette. 
And I'm just gonna throw a transition color into the crease just to get things started. So I'm going into shade six, which is this kind of like neutral, mauve brown kind of color. I think this will be a really nice, no, lies. I'm gonna go shade seven. I'm gonna go into shade seven because I'm going to do this color pretty much all over my, my lid. It was this color that was inspired me to do an Ahsoka you know, inspired look because this is very similar to her skin color. Um, so I'm gonna go into shade seven first. And I'm gonna of course use my Princess Leia mirror. I think a lot of people are like, oh, you're so into Star Wars, but you're a girl, is that like weird? But if you actually look at the Star Wars universe and you look at the films and like the TV shows and everything, there are actually a lot of really strong empowering female characters in the Star Wars universe, which has been going on, you know, since the late 70s with the first episode. I mean, in A New Hope, Princess Leia is such a strong female character. I mean, she's a leader in the resistance. I just love how it inverts the the stereotype of like, you know, saving the princess from the dark, the dark tower. I mean, one of the things that, you know, George Lucas is actually very good at is Sorry, I almost started talking about postmodernism. Uh, if you don't know, I did go to grad school at USC, and while I was there, there was a class all on Star Wars. And the teacher who taught the class is pretty famous at USC. Um, he's a he's a real character, but he would talk a lot about um, postmodern pastiche. <laughs> Postmodern pastiche. Pastiche basically means it's the borrowing of different ideas and themes, concepts, you know, etc., from other works of art. So, for example, in A New Hope, which a lot of people do talk about, how it's um, it's basically a western that is takes place in space, which is true. Um, he also George Lucas also borrows a lot from Kur Kurosawa films. You know, the Japanese director who's very famous. He borrows a lot from Kurosawa. Um, and also just like the whole idea of two, you know, men, they're like the rogues, they're going to try to save the princess. I mean, literally her name is Princess Leia, um, you know, from the, the, evil, the evil villain. And so, I mean, that's just a very common trope in fairy tales, but I do love at the same time how this trope is inverted in so many ways that yes, Han and Luke go to the Death Star to try to save Leia, but in so many instances, Leia is actually the one who saves them. I mean, she's she knows how to shoot the blasters, she's fearless, and she's you know she's there on a mission. She's gonna fight for the resistance no matter what. So I just, I really, really enjoy that part. And I think that's one of the things that made me love the original films so much. So I mean, if you look at Leia, she's a really strong female character. Um, if you look at the Clone Wars, you have Ahsoka, who is, again, very, very strong female, young girl. She's 14, you know, when she starts the, se the series. Um, it's, you know, it takes place over a couple years. But, you know, she's very strong. She's strong-willed. She's just learning. She makes mistakes. But, you know, she learns from those mistakes and just gets better. Yeah, I know that Star Wars is considered to be a typically, you know, it's a nerdy male thing to you know, be into, but just looking at it, this was like, you know, mainstream pop culture that had really strong female characters from, you know, very, very early on. And so, I don't know, I, I like Star Wars for that, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so I got a good transition down. That was pretty fast. I have to say that this shadow does blend really well. It like, it's really pigmented and it blended quite nicely. I mean, it was quick and easy. So I'm now going to go ahead and just kind of clean up the edges a little bit. And I'm going to go into this first light cream shade right here. Um, shade one, obviously. And I'm gonna take this on, you know, a pretty, pretty fluffy packing brush and just start packing this under the brow bone. And once I have it packed on, I'm gonna turn the brush sideways and start blending the edges. So blend shade one and shade seven together. Okay. All right, so we got that down. I'm now gonna take kind of a flat blending brush. This is my Jeffree Star JS6. And I'm going to go into this shade. This is shade three from the palette. Uh, and I'm gonna take this shade pretty much all over my lid. So I'm gonna start by working it into the crease and then packing it on the lid. This is gonna be the main color I want for this look. And just start by like packing this right on the lid. 
Hmm. Hmm. So this is not having the, the color payoff that I exactly wanted. It's coming off a lot lighter on the eye than I wanted. I mean, I really wanted to just like pack this color on and get it to be kind of more like this as opposed to how it is coming off on the eye. So change of plans. I'm just grabbing some concealer right now. This is a, this is the Morphe Fluidity Concealer. I hate this concealer as a concealer. So I just use it as a concealer to cut my crease. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a cut crease. Okay, and I'm gonna take, this is a Luxie concealer brush, and I'm gonna use this to go ahead and just cut my crease. Now I'm going to go in with a flat packing brush, and I'm basically going to just pack on that orange shade, kind of like I would any shimmer shade, but it's gonna be matte instead. There we go. Now we're getting the color payoff that I wanted from this color. So this color is still a little bit sheer, but in general I like it a lot better. There's a lot more pigment than when I first put it on directly on the lid. So I'm going to just go ahead and quickly cut the other eye, cut the other crease, and do the exact same thing over here, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I went ahead and finished up the eye. I'm liking how this is looking so far. So I'm now going to go ahead and switch over to the Dark Side palette, and I'm going to take this shade. This is kind of a muted, gray-toned, bluish color. Um, it's not totally blue, but it's not totally gray. It has kind of like a, it has like little tiny like iridescent sparkles in it, which is pretty. It's a really pretty color, but as we all know, those sparkles in a matte shade are not going to last. But when you do kind of blend it out, it does sort of have like a, a little bit of a bluish undertone to it. So I'm gonna take this on a M433, which I really like as an outer corner like brush. It's kind of flat, but also a little bit fluffy. So I'm applying this color to the outer corner of the eye just to start deepening things up and sort of smoke it out just a little bit. So what I wanna know from my other Star Wars fans out there, how do people feel about episode nine? So they have released the first trailer, like the teaser trailer for episode nine. It's being, the movie's being released in December. I don't know how I feel about it and like honestly, I haven't been the biggest fan of the rebooted trilogy. I I did enjoy Force Awakens, I'm not gonna lie, just because I was excited. It'd been, you know, quite a few years since a new Star Wars movie came out, so I was just, I was into it. I don't know, I don't know, I just have, I think I have such a, I hope, I hope that the main trilogies are gonna be good films, but I think the prequel trilogy taught us to like lower our expectations. I really was less than a huge fan of The Last Jedi. However, I really, really have been enjoying the Star Wars story films, like Rogue One was, I thought, excellent. I thought it had the way that it dovetailed right up to the beginning of A New Hope was excellent. Um, I actually did get to go to a Q&A with the writer, the one of the producers, as well as the director of, of Rogue One while I was in grad school. And he talked about, the one of the producers, he talked about how he just started kind of like spitballing this idea of like, let's expand the crawl. So like the whole, you know, opening crawl of A New Hope that talks about this, these band of rebels who stole the plans for the Death Star. And he's like, why don't we tell their story? So I thought that was a really, really cool thing. I liked it. I liked that a lot. Um, and I think that it's really, really, really awesome how now they're giving Diego Luna, so Cassian uh, from Rogue One is now having his own story, his own television show to expand his backstory that's gonna be on Disney Plus, which I am so excited about, like that, and The Mandalorian. Like I take it or leave it, episode nine, eh, I don't, I'm, I can't, I'm sorry, I just can't get jazzed. I just, I, I can't make myself feel excited about episode nine, as horrible as that sounds, I just can't. But what I'm excited about is like the Cassian, I don't think they've released the name for the Cassian show yet, and if they have, 
I'll, I'll, I'll do some research. I don't think so, but you know, the Diego Luna, um, Cassian story, and then the Mandalorian, like those early release press pictures from the Mandalorian. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I am so excited because the Death Watch storyline, the Death Watch storylines in Clone Wars, watch Clone Wars people, was one of my favorite storylines. I really thought Death Watch was fantastic and so interesting. So I am like so excited to hear about the Mandalorian. Okay, so I, this is coming off. So back to the eyeshadow. This is coming off um, blue, like I was wanting. I was wanting kind of a blue, but I like that it's not overly blue. So it's not clashing and looking too like Broncos colors. Like I would hate to look like a Bronco. Like I want to look like, I want to look like Ahsoka. Although I have to say I'm having a lot of trouble with this matte orange. Like do you see how it's just disappearing on this eye as I try to blend out the crease? It's just flaking off, which is like, ugh, super frustrating. I'm going to have to like go back in. I am having a little bit of a difficult time also blending the like line between the dark shade and this orange. So I'm gonna go now into the black shade from the Dark Side palette, which is of course shade eight <laughs> to this guy, this darkest black shade. And hopefully that will just work to kind of like add a little extra depth and dimension to the outer edge. It's very powdery. A lot of these shadows are very powdery, so I'm making sure to tap off my brush before I go in. And I'm just using this to tap, 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 build up a little extra depth in the outer corner. I think this is looking pretty good so far. So I'm going to hop back into the first shade, the first palette, the light palette, and take shade one. Again, make sure that you can really see this light cream color on the brow bone. And with that, I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my face, and I'll be right back to finish up this eye look. So I'm back, I obviously finished the rest of my makeup. So let's keep going with the eyeshadow. Now I'm going to take um, a slightly more pointed blending brush, and I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna go into this shade. So this would be shade six in the light palette. I'm gonna start by just sweeping this the lower lash line. I'm now going to take kind of a flat shader brush and I'm going back into the dark side palette and going into this kind of more blue tone shade. And this I am just smudging underneath the lower lash line. Now taking a flat definer brush and going into the black shade eight in the dark side palette and picking this up just to use this kind of like a little bit of a shadow liner. And I'm going to line both the top and the lower lash line. Switching back over to the light side palette, I'm taking a flat packing brush. This is my ColourPop E3. And I'm gonna go into this shade here. This is shade two. This is the kind of like satin-ish shade in the palette. It's not really a true shimmer, but I'm going to try to pack this on the inner portion of the eye just to kind of brighten things up a little bit. Mm, sort of worked. It's not great. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of this and just put it under the brow bone as well. I really wanna make sure the cream color is visible, but it's just, these shadows are just so muted. I wouldn't say that they're not pigmented, because they are, they're pigmented, but they just, they blend out, and they're just, they're kind of a little bit more of a muted color palette with these two palettes in particular. That's a little better. All right. Now I'm going to take a blue eyeliner. Um, this is kind of a bright blue metallic. I thought it would kind of, Ahsoka does have blue eyes, so I thought this might kind of tie that together and bring a little more blue in because this is such a muted blue color. I'm putting this in the waterline and I am kind of like smudging it a little bit farther down and then taking that same brush that I used with the kind of blue shadow and just smudging that out a little bit on the lower lash line. And then blending it with just a, a fluffy brush. I think this is this is the same one I used 
on the lower lash line but not adding any more product. All right, so here's the finished eyeshadow look. I'm gonna now grab the last two products from this collection. So these are the mascaras. Again, never been used. I only opened them the other day to just like quickly look at them. So we have the resistance and we have the first order. So the resistance is a lengthening mascara and the first order is supposed to be a volumizing mascara. So in my everyday mascara usage, I like to go in with a lengthening mascara first and then put on a volumizing. So here's the resistance one. It's cute, it's just a pretty standard black packaging but it does have the resistance logo on it. The brush is pretty thin but it's also very full so we're gonna see how this works. It is a little bit kind of tapered at the end. I think this is doing a nice job. It's like, yeah, it's not adding a ton of volume but it is kind of separating, lengthening doing a nice job of coating all of the lashes. Now I'm going to go into the First Order Mascara. Again, this is very similar to the Resistance. It has the First Order logo on the lid. This one has a very similar wand shape, which is actually quite surprising to me. However, this one is much more tapered and comes to a point as opposed to the Resistance Mascara. All right, let's see. I really like the shape of this wand. It's nice for getting into the inner corner of the eyes. Honestly, I'm not noticing a ton of volume on this guy. It's a little bit. Let's try to build up on the outer edge. Okay, so this is with two coats of the resistance and two coats of the First Order Mascara. It's a little bit more volume, but probably it's just because now I have four coats of mascara in my lashes. I don't know if it's really so much of the mascara doing it as opposed to like just the fact that I have so many coats of mascara on. So I finally got that mascara done. So um, the last little bit of this Ahsoka inspired look is of course her signature deep brown lips. Um, I kind of, I did a little digging through my small collection that I have here. Most of my collection is still packed up in boxes waiting for my official beauty room to be done. But I think I found something, like I think I found a little combo that will get close to getting Ahsoka's signature brown lips. So I'm going to go in first with this Kat Von D liquid lipstick. This is in the shade Bow and Arrow, which is kind of like a neutral cool tone brown. And then finally, just to deepen up this color a little bit, add a little more richness and deep brown color, I'm going to go into it with this guy. This is the Buxom, what is this called? Lip Plumping Full On Lip Cream. And this is in the shade Moscow Mule, which is kind of a reddish brown shade. And there we have it, my Ahsoka Tano inspired makeup look. <laughs> It was fun to finally get around to playing with these two palettes and the eye, the mascaras. The mascaras are just kind of like, eh, they're not that great. Honestly, I've had drugstore mascaras that work a lot better than these. Maybe it's just the fact that they are kind of old at this point. So overall, I still, I enjoyed these palettes. I still think um, I enjoyed the idea of these palettes. I like the thought of them. I like the theme better than I actually like the actual product. I mean, yes, it's not quite my normal style of makeup. It's a lot more muted and toned down than I normally like in my eyeshadow, but I still did think it was a lot of fun trying to come up with an eyeshadow look that invokes the spirit of Ahsoka using these palettes. So if you liked this video like I did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let's me know you liked it so I can keep doing things like this in the future. And if you have not yet subscribed, you know, as Master Yoda says, do or do not, there is no trick Try. So do hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you'll be notified every single time that I upload a new video. Thanks again for joining me. I will see you guys next time and may the force be with you always.